Welcome to Dad's Kitchen, everyone. Today we're gonna be making nice big beef jerky strips. So stick around, I'll show you how to make this. On uh, this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make uh, beef jerky. Beef jerky from, from this, it's packaged, yes, but it's easy, it's simple, and it's not hard to do and you don't need a dehydrator because I'm gonna just go ahead and use a regular old oven and uh, it just takes a long process of dehydrating so uh, you're gonna need this or if you have seasoning you can but I find this to be good enough it definitely is pretty good uh, one of these actually makes uh, let me see here so you get uh, the seasoning Okay, and then you get uh, one one pack of jerky cure and one pack of seasoning. Now this is for two pounds of ground beef. Okay, two pounds of ground beef, and so uh, that's what you use. So this isn't for you know like your hamburger patty size. Two pounds of ground beef. Okay, so uh, this is what I use. I use uh, Nesco. You can. I think I'll, I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in this. Uh, they have different seasoning, but this is just simple and easy. You can actually make your own seasoning. I just find it easy just to buy. Uh, another thing you might want to consider is, um, well, if you have if you have a KitchenAid. So if you have a KitchenAid, great. This is what I'm using. This uh, mixer. Okay. Nope. Okay. And after that, uh, parchment paper. Uh, this will make your life a lot easier. Parchment paper. So, uh, and then here is the ground beef that you use. And get lean. See that? If you get lean, this is. 96% lean, 4% fat. Get the leanest you can because fat will, um, the fat will uh, s get really greasy and oily. What you want is just the meat. So, and also fat spoils the jerky, so to speak. But you want it to dry out. You don't want it to be oily and fat. So avoid like the 80-10, 80-20 uh, ground beef. Get lean because you want to dry the meat out and not melt the fat. So uh, I get extra lean ground beef, only 4%, 4% ground beef. And uh, that's, that's it. So um, let me get started. Okay. So let me get started. So first thing I do is I, uh, I get the mixer ready. And that's the first thing I will do. So get the mixer ready and uh, put in the uh, ground beef. So I'll get started on that right away. Okay, I got the uh, beef mixing in here. I just get it mixed up. While this is getting mixed up, I'll get the package. And put the cure in first and then the seasoning. Okay, so while the uh, seasoning, the curing is in there, I have a small little wooden roller, and sometimes the package gets stiff. The seasoning, you know, gets very hard. So uh, I'll take uh, I'll take this and I'll I'll beat on it. I will roll it as well. I'll roll on it. And that what it does is it, it crushes the uh, seasoning into a powder because it'll dry out and get stiff in here sometimes. Okay, so uh, I have to warn you, when you open the package, it's the seasoning is very strong. You might start sneezing. Um, what you'll probably want to do is instead of... Uh, I find this to be the easiest way without the powder pluming and making you sneeze 
So once you got it mixed, open it up. There's the ground beef right there. And I just actually start pouring this in. And then I'll mix it little by little. And that uh, that stops the, uh, the seasoning from pluming dust and uh, you won't sneeze as much. All right, so I got the seasoning all in there. And while it's seasoning, I'm just gonna let this thing run until it turns like a, um, almost like a uh, mushy dark brown, uh, a very mushy dark brown. What I'm doing here, while the um, meat is being mixed with the seasoning and the salt and the curing, is uh, this is about the size that I want the, uh, the beef jerky pan to be. So I'm going to take the uh, parchment paper like this and I'm just going to just roll it out so I know that that's about the size and I'm going to uh, size it right here like that. Okay so uh, you let this kind of mix as much as you can you see the texture the texture has changed the uh, coloration has changed starting to glop up around the, the mixer so you probably want to just go ahead and stop it or sometimes I, uh, I have it go at a higher speed to try to knock it off and so next time uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this <laughs> basically uh, ground beef uh, mush and uh, put it onto the parchment paper I have two parchment paper here as you see Two parchment paper and what I'm basically going to do is going to put it on here and then mash it down to make a flat strip and uh, I'll show you how. This is what the meat looks like. I'm just going to just try to pour it out, to quote unquote pour it out. I'm just going to roll it out here and uh, this is how I'm going to do it here. Just put it down and there we go. Two pounds of ground beef. I'm making two pounds of ground beef here. All right, so here's my two pounds of ground beef. Uh, gonna put the other parchment paper over it and just push down. And uh, this is where this comes in handy because I'm gonna push it out and we're gonna make a nice square here. Okay, so um, I'm back here. Uh, I've flattened as, as much as I could. Uh, what I really want to do is make sure that the middle is lower than the edges. The edges could be a little bit higher because the way it dries out in the oven, it uh, edges seem to dry out faster than the middle. So this is what it looks like. Um, try to roll it out as much as I can to the edges, as much as I can to the edges. If the edges and the sides here are a little bit thicker, that's okay because it dries out. And uh, what I like about doing it this way is you can you can kind of see what it looks like on the bottom. Now the bottom, you'll see these little lines in here. I leave that um, it, it, when it dries up, it makes it look like it makes it look like beef jerky. And I'll, I'll show you when it dries up. But uh, if you have a lines on the bottom of this, because I push down and they kind of make these little crevices and lines that's okay um, the top part I guess you could have some of these little lines in here but uh, for the most part if they're smooth that's that's I actually better and the other thing is uh, when you get this and you smush it down and you massage it you massage it you know like how I was doing it and then you finally roll it out smooth and sometimes you roll it to move the uh, ground beef around what you want to do is uh, sometimes it'll spread out unevenly so what I do is 
when it gets too close, like I, th I think this is fine. I, it, this looks really close, but if you get lean, very lean, try to get the leanest ground beef you can. Uh, that way the fat won't drip. There won't, there will be very little fat dripping. So what I do is when it gets close to this, what I, what I do is I will just fold it over and push it down and peel it back. Okay, I'm not going to do it because I already done it. Um, and then put this back on here, and you'll have you'll, you'll move it back, and then I will smooth it out again, and re move the ground beef around. So until I'm satisfied with the overall thickness, this is probably like a quarter, quarter to three eighths, or somewhere around there. Um, I like my beef jerky a little a little thick because I like to chew, have a little bit thick. You could put it out thin as you want. This is two pounds. That's the way I prefer it, but you could do whatever you want. So, um, okay, so basically I've rolled it out, flattened it. Excellent. Now I have another, I have another two pounds. I make four, four pounds of beef jerky. So um, I'm going to reuse this top because this is parchment paper, and this is kind of what it looks like, and it should roll off real easy like this all right and then i'm gonna go ahead and save that for the next one okay save that for the next one and um the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna preheat the oven okay i'm, I'm here i'm here preheating the oven so uh let's do bake and i'm gonna try to take this i'm gonna take this to the lowest setting it only goes down to 170 but let's get the oven preheated. Okay, so it's one, 170. I'm gonna go ahead and just get it started. There we go. And it's gonna preheat. So when I when the when I get done with everything, it's ready. Okay, in this step here, um, I have a little roller cutter or whatever this is. I use this for pizza. You've probably seen this in my pizza episode, Dad's Kitchen. <laughs> making pizza so uh, what I noticed I used to do this solid the problem I had was the moisture doesn't ex escape in the middle as well so what I my solution is you could try to poke holes or whatever but what I've done is I, I've kind of killed two birds with one stone eventually you have to cut these up usually you'll do small strips or whatever but uh, I do one big strip and you, you have to cut this up. So what I do to get the moisture out from the middle of the ground beef and also to make it easy to cut or break apart is I use a roller and this is how I'm going to do it. Now I just, I just go at a little angle here because I'm going to put it in the, the rack, the oven rack goes this way. So you don't want to cut this way because then it'll just flop kind of weird so I I do a little I do it diagonally and sometimes it, you, it gets a little thick so I, I kind of just go back and forth a little bit to make sure it cuts all the way through and I kind of do one to one and a half maybe two inch strips that's the way I'm doing it and do it diagonally because when you put it in the oven you want it to stay together, not fall apart on you. You'll see what I'm talking about here. All right, I'm done. So the next step is to put it in the oven. And once it gets to that temperature, the lowest setting is about 170 degrees. I'll just put it in. And then while that's cooking, I'll actually work on the second one. This is going to take 10 hours. OK, I, I, I do mine for 10 hours. And so pretty much I put it in the oven. Forget about it. Ten hours later, um, I let it cool down, and then you'll see the end results. All right, the oven has warmed to probably probably about a uh, 170 degrees. Okay, so that's the lowest setting that I have my oven on. There's no dehydrator. This is 10 hours, so be prepared to do 10 hours of this, but uh, it's well worth it. All right, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the to the oven. This is kind of how I, I do it. And it just holds together. And just go ahead and plop it right in. 
Watch your hands. Once, once you get it in, it would have been nice if I pulled the rack, but that's all right. It still works. There we go. Just make sure it's on. All right, so once, okay, so once it's in here, um, that's it. That's all you do. Uh, make sure you get lean, very little fat. The fat will not drip, and it'll stay like that, and it'll be 10 hours. So see you 10 hours later. All right, uh, if you have a smartphone, 10 hours. Let's get started. And I'll see you in 10 hours. Okay, everyone, welcome back. It's been 10 hours here, and this is what it looks like so far. Uh, obviously, it's been more than 10 hours. I leave this overnight. So once it reaches 10 hours of cook time or dehydration time, um, I turn the oven off. It is still hot. You see the corners are missing. The corners are missing here and, and up here. And uh, it's because I had to taste it. I had to have some. It's a little different when it's fresh and hot. But I usually leave it overnight because um, it is still warm. And so I let the, uh, the uh, moisture escape from the beef jerky. And this is what it looks like. It has a different color. You, you, if you see these bumps, these bumps are the, uh, from the rack. And uh, you can see that the parchment paper uh, absorbs some of the oil. You can see right here. And also you can see that the beef jerky has shrunk just a little bit. That's what happens when it gets dehydrated. So I'm going to take a little towel. Uh, you'll see a little bit of oil or fat still on there. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to originally, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pat it down. Pat it down, try to absorb some of that oil. And uh, yeah, I just put it in the rack this way and I didn't flip it over. Um, the parchment paper allows the air to go through onto the other side. So this is kind of like the top side and you can see it looks like beef jerky that you would normally see out of uh, your grocery store. But what I usually do is I put it in the refrigerator in a bag and I leave it the bag open and putting in the refrigerator uh, dehydrates it a little bit more so it gets a little bit more drier. The beef jerky is still wet. So this is kind of what it looks like and if you remember I cut it. Yes. <laughs> and so I start I start to bend it and then it just look at it just tears right out. So this helps me uh, getting that uh, pizza cutter helps me a lot. It's just I just start tearing it. And I guess if you want, you can leave it like this. Have beef jerky strips like that. But I go further and I just cut it. I cut it here. I cut one, two, get three pieces out of this. So when you look at it on the back side, I mean, yeah, it looks looks like beef jerky, doesn't it? The coloring is right. The little brown reddish color. That's how it comes out. And finally, what I do is I just cut this. Just smaller strips. Like that. And then I put them, I put a, I put it in a, in a plastic bag and I leave the bag open and I put it in the refrigerator. Or you can put it in the freezer. Um, it's probably going to be in the refrigerator. But I put it in the refrigerator because it will still lose, see, still, still a little flexible, slightly flexible. Uh, still a little oily, and uh, so I put it in the refrigerator, and it dehydrates it a little bit more is what I noticed. Leave the bag open. There's still a lot of moisture in here, and so uh, that's what I do. Just put it in the refrigerator in a open plastic bag, and the refrigeration will suck the moisture out, and eventually you'll get to a point where you get um, dried beef jerky. So there you go. Please like, share, subscribe. Hopefully this was helpful. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.